been asked to consider as part of our Christmas devotion the gift of protection. And I have to say, at the beginning, it seemed a bit of a strange topic, but things have become clearer. First of all, I thought about ways in which we or I would protect ourselves. If we have a wound, we might just put a dressing on it to protect it from further harm or from infection. I'm old enough to remember when wearing a seatbelt in the car became law. At first, I thought that was a bit over the top, until my brother, driving home late one night, was involved in a car accident. And as a result of that, his car rolled over several times and his car was a complete write-off. But because he had a seatbelt on, he was protected from being rolled around the car or thrown from the car. He escaped unharmed, all because of his seatbelt. It really was good protection. We wear helmets when we ride bikes. We build sea defences to protect the land. We make laws to protect children, people's rights and wildlife. And as parents, we will do anything to protect our children. In the dictionary, protection is described as keeping something or someone safe. I was interested in there to see an example of protection money, when someone might pay somebody else to protect them from someone else who won't do them harm. And then I started to think of a bodyguard, a person who chooses to protect someone else's life. There's a film starring Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich, where Clint is an FBI agent who's been employed to guard the President of the United States. John Malkovich is a would-be assassin who taunts Clint um, about whether or not the President's life is worth protecting. He asks Clint, will you take the bullet? Will you give your life for this other man? Well, in the film, Clint does take the bullet. He saved the President and the assassin's plans are thwarted. As we think of Jesus and why he came and what he accomplished on the cross, it's as if, crudely speaking, he took the bullet for us. At Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birth, his coming into the world, and he came with one mission, to protect us from the evil one, to stand in the gap, to take our punishment for sin, and to give us the gift of eternal life. In Romans 3, we read that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, we all deserve punishment, but Jesus came to take that punishment and to protect us from our sin. That was the ultimate act of sacrifice, taking the bullet, protecting our lives for eternity. And this is confirmed in Romans 5 when we read, You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die but a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But his work of protection doesn't end there. He's always with us. His protection doesn't keep us from hard times, illness, disappointment or heartache. But his promise is always to be with us, protecting us from ultimate death. I recently heard a chap called Mike Pivlatchi speaking about prayer ministry and reminding us that the most important healing is for our souls for us to be reconciled and in relationship with God. It's better to limp into heaven a bit scarred than to risk being with him, not being with him because we misunderstood what his protection is for. God promises that he wants to protect our journey through life. In Romans 8 we read, Who shall separate us from the love of God, Christ? <laughs> shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing needs to take us outside of God's protection. As we trust in him, our way will be straight. In 1 Corinthians 13, he promises that nothing will come to us that we cannot bear, but that he will always provide a way out so that we can endure it. And again, in Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 3, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And there's more encouragement in Deuteronomy 31, where it says, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God has also given us his armour so that we can be protected and able to stand in our battles. In Ephesians 5 it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
and it goes on to tell us that the armour is what it is and how it's an active armour, not just something to wear, but a way to be active in defending ourselves. God will be faithful in protecting us throughout our lives, and I believe he encourages us to extend that protection to others. There's probably a whole sermon about that, but just to encourage us, John 15, it just simply says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. It's the bodyguard analogy again. We are to protect others throughout their lives and tell them of God's salvation. As we come to Christmas and consider this vulnerable baby Jesus, let's not be fooled, but recognise who he is, what he accomplished on the cross, that he has our lives under his protection and that one day he will present us safely to Father in heaven. Jude 1 says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages and now and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for sending your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and taking the bullet for us so we can know God's love and protection, not only throughout our lives, but until we meet with you in heaven. Your love and faithfulness are amazing, and we thank you, and we trust in you. Amen. God bless you.